Okay guys, let's talk about the transform node and setting basic keyframes within Nuke. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to my image tab and I'm going to add a color wheel. I'm going to pop my color wheel down into my viewer so you can see what it looks like. And there we go, just a normal color wheel. Remember these little colored dots are from the learning edition, that's just part of it. So if you're wondering what that is, that's what that is. So now we have this, okay, let's go ahead and add another node. Go back to our image tab and let's add a checkerboard. Okay, now we've added the checkerboard. Now I want to put this color wheel over my checkerboard, so I'm going to bring in a merge node by tapping the M key. And that'll bring in a merge node. And as you can see, there's A and B, which means we want A over B. So we'll take our color wheel, put it into the merge A, and our checkerboard into B. So it'll be A over B. And we'll pop that into our viewer, and we have our checkerboard over, I mean our color wheel over our checkerboard. So now let's get to why we came. Let's talk about our transform node. So let's select our color wheel, go to our transform tab, and add a transform node. And when we do this, you'll see we get this little handle here. Now, there's a lot of things you can do with this handle. This long one here is the rotation. Okay. These dots control the size. Okay. If you want to shrink it way down, you can do that. Now, if you'll notice, when I move this, you can still see it, and that's a proxy version. You won't get this in AE, and it's a little different way of working, but once you get used to it, you'll love it because you can see where it was before, and it don't have to redraw every frame like the other ones, like the other apps do. Okay, so now we have this little dot right here. If we want to change our pivot point or our center point, just hold the command key and drag, and you'll move that center point off. Okay, and now when you rotate, you'll see it's rotating around that center point. So now how we set keyframes. Okay, we got our um, timeline here, if you call it that, from frame 1 to 100. I'm going to middle click and drag from frame 1 to 50 and just make it 50 frames long. Okay, now I've got my playhead on the, the first frame. I've got my transform tab selected. I'm going to close out all my parameters to my other nodes. That way just my transform parameters are viewable. Now how do I set keyframes? Well, that's easy. Go to the frame you want to start setting your keyframe on and this little button next to the side of the um, parameters you can click it and it'll let you set a keyframe and I'm going to set a keyframe for translate rotate and scale respectively so let's click that and say set key click that and say set key and click the next one and say set key now as you can see they've highlighted blue and our translate rotate and scale have a keyframe set on frame one so let's take our little circle and put it where we want it to start on frame one so there we go so now let's move to frame 10 Okay, and let's just take, and since we've got keyframes set, you can see now that we've come off the original frame we set our keyframe on, it's a different color blue. But it's still blue telling us, hey, there's a keyframe set in here somewhere. We went to frame 10, now since it's got a keyframe set, it should record every movement we make. So I'm going to pull it down here, like this, and you'll see we get a motion path. Okay, so let's go on up to frame 20. And we'll drag it up here like this. And we'll go to frame 30. We'll drag it back over to where it was, go to frame 40, and we'll drag it to the middle. And now when I scroll back through my timeline, you can see our color wheel is falling along that path. Let me play it. It'll play through and cache it once. Okay. And after that, it'll play smoothly. So we want to add some motion blur to this. So as you can see in our transform tab, we have a motion blur setting. So let's make it about... 12, 15, that's about our saturation point before you're not going to be able to tell much of a difference. And now you can see this is a scanline renderer. It'll go through when I play this, it'll go through and redraw and then after it plays through once we won't have to worry about that anymore until we make a change. So let me play this through. You can see it's redrawing there as it goes and we're getting some major, major motion blur because I've got it set so high. Okay, You can change your motion blur down to something a little less intense Okay, because motion blur is really intense, you can see my processes are fully pegged while it's doing this. Okay. Now it's almost down, almost done, and we can play this back at normal speed, and you can see the motion blur. Now you can see the motion blur. It's hard to see because it's moving so fast, but the motion blur is there, you can see. Zoom in on it here. Okay, 
If you don't quite want that much motion blur, just dial back your motion blur. Okay, and that's that easy. If you're used to Shake or AE or setting keyframes in any app, then I think you're going to find setting keyframes in Nuke to be extremely easy, if not easier than what you're used to. It's a really fast application, Nuke is, at um, redrawing and stuff, and I think you're all going to be really happy with it once you get used to it and get into it. A lot of people are looking for a replacement to Shake since Shake is now not being sold anymore, and um, Nuke looks to be it. Okay, don't don't get me wrong. There's other ones out there like Fusion and stuff that I'm going to be considering. But Nuke is going to be the mainstay for a while because Work just bought a couple seats of it, and I think they're um, in the process of transitioning. But I don't see Shake going anywhere anytime soon. They're always going to have their Shake stations. Um, so Shake's going to be around for a while. Now that people own the source code, it's more or less basically an exclusive in-house tool for a lot of people. So the only place you're going to see Shake anymore is probably in-house where people's bought the source code and developed it on their own. You can still buy Shake on eBay and probably Amazon and stuff. Some places still have it in stock. If you want to grab a copy, grab it up. But um, Nuke is a wonderful alternative. It is expensive, but, you know, show was Shake at one time um, before it got to the end of life. So um, it's just normal, normal for these type of applications. Um... Motion's a good compositor, but it's nothing like Nuke or Shake, and anybody who says it is is just wrong. It's good for motion graphics and stuff, but not for film compositing. Maybe previs. Um, in our next video, we're going to look at the, the uh, tracking and stabilize nodes. We'll have to track manually because of the colored dots, but that's just a small setback. It can still show you how the nodes work. So I look forward to that video when we talk about the tracking node and how to stabilize stuff. Thanks for watching.